and I'm actually obsessed with podcasts, as are other millions of other people. So you uh, do you, did you choose to um, put put the season on Audible because you love listening to? I'll, I'll say a few things about that. Yeah. Um, you know, in the earliest days of this pandemic, as we were all sort of scrambling to sort of secure ourselves and figure out what it was going to take to get through, I found reading impossible, yeah. watching television impossible. Huh. There was not a lot of sort of escape or distraction until I put in my earbuds and I started listening. And there's something about listening, I think, that's so intimate. Yeah. Um, and yet, it also demands something of us, right? As listeners, if we can listen, truly listen, we also have to bring ourselves to that process. And so Kate Naven is the artistic producer of the theater division of Audible. And I really um, just, you know, called up Kate and said, let's make this, let's do the whole season. Wow. And I was really driven, I guess, in part by this notion of like, this is possible, right? You can hear plays and deliver an experience for an audience that isn't the same, right? If we make these exquisitely and we start now, we're recording them now yeah. uh, and we're off to a great start, we're not replacing a live theatrical experience. It's a different form, you know? Right, right, right. Um, And it doesn't take anything away from the downstream, we hope, eventual stage incarnation of this work. Yeah. But it's, it's, it's a form with integrity, it's a form that has, you know, incredible potential for artistry and innovation and front-footedness, particularly with Audible, yeah. who's really on the front lines of utilizing exciting, interesting sonic technology to tell stories. And As how do they rehearse? On, do they rehearse that via Zoom? The, the first four projects, which are in rehearsal now and scheduled to record, yeah. they are all happening remotely. We had originally hoped that our Audible recordings could happen in live studios, in the live Audible studios right, in New York. Right. However, when New York State published its guidance on the phasing, live entertainment without an audience and live entertainment with an audience were sort of lumped into one category and in phase four. Uh, so we decided to just get going yeah. and not lose this time and put the shows into rehearsal. Um, and so, yes, Shakina Nafax, Chambori International Hotel and Butterfly Club, uh, directed by Laura Savia. Animals by Stacey Osei Kufour, directed by Whitney White. Uh, Streetcar Named Desire, directed by Robert O'Hara. And Photograph 51 by Anna Ziegler, directed by Susan Stroman, are all currently in rehearsal over Zoom, scheduled for their audible recordings that will happen with actors in their homes hooking kits that Audible sent them into their technology yeah. so that Audible can capture each individual voice. Wow. And then as planned, which is how it works, each show has a month-long post-production period where the brilliance and innovation of Audible is fused to the brilliance and innovation of Laura Savia and Robert O'Hara and Whitney White yeah. and uh, Susan Stroman and our sound designers who, who would have been in our theaters. Together, they will weave those vocal tracks yeah. and all of the sonic choices they make around that into the play we hear on Audible. Yeah, I think it's remarkable. And I, and I think that actually it will be useful for uh, students and for other theaters to see what potential exists, but also just just to slow down and listen to a story, which is what theater, of course, is, uh, is, I think, what, you know, kind of what we, what we have the capacity for right now as people, just to listen to these stories. The opportunity to put the work on a global platform where the barriers to accessing it are diminished utterly, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So long as, and it seems, maybe I'm wrong, an awful lot of people have the devices, right? Yeah, yeah, um, you yeah. know, we're really breaking down some barriers to, to these stories uh, being heard by, you know, wide, diverse, varied people all over the country, all over the world. So yeah. it's like a wonderful, this season is representative of a really balanced, beautiful season. I must say, in light of what's going on in the world and in light of what we're talking about, um, in our community about finding a way to balance artistically and 
socially and politically what you present. I, I think it's wonderful that you chose this season before um, the eruption of COVID and, and the issues surrounding George Floyd's murder and BLM and all of that. And I think it's representative of a mission that you had previously uh, or pre-existing. We have over the past couple of years pretty aggressively moved toward making this theater, the work that happens on our stages and increasingly the work that happens off our stages. Uh, a place that is truly reflective of our country so that we can say with full open hearts, with a deep commitment to people from all different walks of life, mm -hmm. the Williamstown Theatre Festival is a legendary American theatre company and what happens here is reflective of what happens in America. Either because of my, uh, my own taste or, or, or the commitments we've made as a company to new work and to new work that has a kind of cultural relevance and uh, drives a cultural conversation, we happen also to be looking at work and making work that is interrogating the moment that we're living yeah. in. The other opportunity we have to say, you know, through this global health pandemic, through what could absolutely and undeniably be called a social revolution in our country, mm -hmm. how can the Williamstown Theatre Festival make a set of choices to come back in a way that is better, stronger, more fortified, more aligned with the deepest and most you know, humane values of equity, diversity, and inclusion, and justice. How can we make our work have impact and integrity and excellence with the best young, early career, and established yeoman luminary theater makers all at once in one little place called Williamstown. We have an unprecedented number of playwrights, composers, generative artists making work right now for the Williamstown Theater Festival and the theater at large. Our Andrew Martin Weber new play and musical commissioning program has never been more robust. Writers are writing yeah. uh, and that's thrilling and we're super proud to be able to keep that moving forward. Um, we have a community works initiative uh, that we launched uh, back in 2016. Uh, it is, we are part of a national affiliate of theaters committed to a community engaged work. Uh, we have kept that program moving during, through, and beyond the coronavirus pandemic. And interestingly, uh, again, in moving it online, we actually find that we're expanding, right? Our community mm -hmm. is now not just the Northern Berkshires because while our community works program is you know, certainly Williamstown based and works with and draws upon community partners all over uh, the region, you know, suddenly those partnerships beget partnerships beget partnerships and as you move these platforms online, yeah. um, again, the barriers to access come down and, and, and we are growing yeah. and that's been wonderful. Amazing. 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 Yeah. yeah. And we're also hosting a group of generative artists here on Spring Street in Williamstown this summer mm -hmm. uh, just to be here you know yeah. our, we share a name with a town um, and that's not insignificant to us and we really wanted to be able to do something that is safe and right and wonderful for yeah. our artists for our community having artists working here living here yeah. during the summer means something it means something to them and I think it means something to the town and we're just thrilled that you know, the 2020 Pulitzer Prize winner Michael R. Jackson is down the street yeah, and Martina yeah. Mayoke, whose play Cost of Living we produced in, in 2016, who won a Pulitzer, is writing plays down yeah, the street. Yeah. And she's joined by Sylvia Corey and, and uh, you know, other wonderful, yeah. uh, wonderful writers uh, with whom we have relationships, with whom we hope to have relationships, all making work uh, that will be born in Williamstown uh, in the tradition that so many can say has been true for 60 some odd years, yeah. making work in Williamstown mean something. That's beautiful. Really answered all my questions. I have many other questions that like extend into life. <laughs>